A very good morning to all of you. Nagpasalamat gid ako sa Ginoo sa pribilehiyo nga makadala naman sang aton nga devotional sa inyo sa Sili nga aga. And ang aton nga morning devotion, I have entitled this The God Who Challenges Our Security. And ang aton nga passage sa Sili nga aga makita sa book sang Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 and allow me to read it to you sa English Standard Version. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. That's verse 1 of Isaiah chapter 6. You know what? I think I have not lived long enough for me to say uh, I have seen enough things in my life. I am 30 years old, and I think uh, Kulang pa ang ako niya na But then, I can say from where I stand today that last year and ang subong nga year, amuni sila ang mga years sa akong life that I feel like amuni yung pinakataas gid nga level sa sense of insecurity ko as far as my health is concerned. I don't know about you. Probably amun mo nang imo na batsagan. Nga tungod nga nag-start ang pandemic last year na continue subong a year, siguro you have that sort of feeling, uh, my sense of quote-unquote insecurity kita, especially in relation with our finances because we know nga the economy is sort of down. May ara kita sense of insecurity sa aton nga health. May sense of insecurity kita sa safety sa aton nga family members. And so some, sometimes I cannot help but to ask the question, why would God always challenge our sense of security. Nya ang ginoo, why would why does God allow our possessions? Na aton nga mga possessions. Why would God allow our position? Maybe as a member of a family, maybe as uh, a worker sa inyong office or as a teacher or whatever. Why would God allow our possessions, our positions, and, and the people in our lives, time and time again, be, be threatened? Now, why would God always challenge our sense of security? You know what? God, God challenging the sense of security of His people is one of the common experience in the Bible. Nadamo sa mga stories sa Bible that would tell us nga permigid gina pamik sang Ginoo uncomfortable no gina allow sang Ginoo nga ang iya makanakan will be in a position that they will feel insecure they will feel sort of uncomfortable unsure and we cannot help but to ask why but we can see lots of of um, instances in the scriptures like this no one of those is Joseph no, we cannot help but to wonder, nga agin allow sang ginoo si Joseph nga ma-remove sa security sang iya nga father and allow him to be sold in slavery in Egypt. Ya kung sa diin, he was falsely accused, he was maltreated, he was forgotten in the dungeon. Why would God allow such a thing? Sometimes we cannot help but to wonder, nga aman ang ginoo, gin, gin, why is there a need? for the Israelites to vacate Egypt, kag nga agin dala sila sa ginoo sa wilderness. You know, wilderness is a place of danger. It is a place of chaos. It is a place where hindi gin abundant ang supply sang food and water, unlike unlike Egypt. Now, why would God take His people out and place them in a scenario nga ka-insecure, no? insecure sa ilang labat sa gan? Same thing with Elijah. Why does Elijah have to take refuge in a brook? Nga later gin allow laman sang Ginoo to dry. Why why is there a need for Habakkuk to experience, you know, the Babylonian invasion? Why is there a need for Habakkuk to to witness that the fig tree will not blossom? Kitungod nga gin ransak na sang mga Babylonians, wala na bilin nga kasapatan sa ilang mga fold, sa ilang mga stalls, wala na bilin nga grain sa ilang mga barn. Why, why is there a need for, for Habakkuk and for God's people to experience such a thing? 
Now, why does Job? See, Job, why does have why does Job have to lose his you know to lose his health, to lose his wealth, to lose his family? Nya, nya in fact, hambasang ginohi is righteous before God. Why is there a need for Lazarus to die when Lazarus' sister sent for Jesus? They asked for his help. They personally sent someone to look for him and tell him that he whom you love is sick. Why did Jesus allow Lazarus to die? You know, threaten some sense of security sa mga, sa mga sisters ni Lazarus, allowing to, them to experience losing someone. You know, why? And sa atong nga passage na rin, why would God take a good king, allow a good king to die, nga kung sa diin, on that same year, may ara rumors of war na probably mag, mag-invade, ma- ma-invade ang Israel. You know, questions like this, perhaps amumani ang isa sa mga questions mo subong. Maybe it is just stated differently. Maybe you are in a position right now when you feel threatened. Maybe in this in this um, pandemic you lost your job and you cannot help but to wonder you know, nga asubong yun. Maybe you lost someone. Maybe someone that you rely in too much sa inyong family. Maybe a leader sa inyong balay, the one who always calls the shots sa mga crucial nga mga decisions. Maybe a breadwinner in the family you lost that person and maybe you are wondering God you know, nga asubong pa. Nga asubong pa nga ka nga ka insecure yun sang time. No, why would God? always challenge our sense of security. Now, let me answer that this this morning by telling you that God challenges our sense of security to remind us that He is still on the throne. God challenges our sense of security to instill in our minds to remind us that I am still on the throne, that God is still on the throne, that He is still in control. We can see that in our passage. Now this morning, ang chapter na ginbasa naton, the chapter opens up with the line, in the year that King Uzziah died. And I want to tell you this morning, I want to tell you today, that to say, no? To say that, to say that line, to say in the year that King Uzziah died, is to say a lot. That particular line alone speaks a lot of things. Well, let me sh- uh, let me share you my thoughts. Now, that line in the year that King Uzziah died was more than just a date. Maybe some of us would read that line in chapter six, verse one, and say, "Nga ang author siguro gusto niya lang kita tagaan sang timeline for us to know that this particular year a certain king died." Maybe as we read it, we we we, we think nga this is just a date. But allow me to tell you that this is more than just a date. This is more than just a date for us to know the chronological sequence of events. This is more than just telling us the when, because this is also tells us the why. Nga ala patay ang hari. Nga asa amugin na year na patay si King Uzziah. More than just the obvious information that a certain king died, you know, as far as Isaiah is concerned. This is a year when Israel became vulnerable to their enemies. To say that in the year King Uzziah died is to say that this is a year when Israel is exposed to enemy threats, exposed to economic breakdown, exposed to spiritual decline, because the king who led them for 50 plus years is now lying in the grave. That is what it means to say in the year that King Uzziah died. It was more than just giving us a date. It is to inform us that that year, Israel is susceptible to all enemy threats. That the economy of Israel nga naging strong for many years because of this king, may tendency nga ma-fail. Because they no longer have that person that they relied. Nga maghatag sa victory sila sa war, Nga maghatag sang stable economy sa ila. That person, that king is now gone. It was more than just a date. And secondly, more than just a king. To say, 
in the year that King Uzziah died is more than just informing us that King so and so died. Do you know who King Uzziah is in the Bible? King Uzziah was one of the good kings of Judah. Well, kung familiar ka gitsang story ni King Uzziah, siguro mahambal ka nga, well, he started good, pero nag-end siya nga not so good. Well, yes, um, I agree with that. Pero generally, no, most of his life, naghatagid siya sa something good sa Israel. He brought about ang iyang leadership because of the help of God, because of his spiritual mentor, na lead niya gid ang Israel into certain you know, heights sang success, naka-experience sila sang long years of prosperity because of, 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 of this particular um, good king of Israel, King Uzziah. Now, he was more than just a king. King Uzziah, spiritually speaking, ang basa pulong sang ginoo, he was marvelously helped by God until he was strong. Could you imagine that? God has been his helper. God made it sure that this particular king will be great. He will be a good king. No wonder na grabe ang successes, grabe ang um, war advances, kag mga victories ang Israel sa mga surrounding nila ng mga regions. Because God had been on King Uzziah's side. And not, not, not just that, may arak kagid siya sang, sang mentor by the person of Zechariah. Amun ni siyang iya nga spiritual mentor nga nag-guide gid sa iya as a king. Would you imagine that you have a godly man beside you every day to, to give you wisdom sa inyong mga decisions, to advise you sa inyong mga himuon? No wonder, grabe git ang success ni King Uzziah for 52 years. That's spiritually speaking. Militarily speaking, King Uzziah was an amazing tactician. Sagad sa agad, gid siya mag-strategize sa mga strategies for war. He was a good inventor too. Nag-invent siya sa mga state-of-the-art ng mga weapons like catapult and crossbows. Gin-fortify niya ang mga cities. He built towers even in the desert. Could you imagine that? Wala pa sang king niya ever nga nakahimo sila before. King Uzziah was a person niya, grabe siya mag-think militarily, niya even ang mga disyerto na nga, nga parts ang Israel, ginpatindugan niya pa sa mga towers. So that whenever nga ang mga Israelites uh, mag-pass through the desert, they will feel safe from from robbers, they will feel safe from from the enemy, tungod niya may mga, may mga guards dira na nakapost. So simply put, niya grabe git ang sense of peace sa mga people during the time because of of how this particular king led them. Israel, you know, won military victories over Philistines and, and other neighboring nations. King Uzziah was a strong king militarily. He was a strong king, spiritually speaking. And thirdly, he was more than just a king because he was a strong king economically. Sa, sa Chronicles, it tells us that this is the kind of king who is not afraid to get his hands dirty. This particular king loves the soil. He loves to till the ground. He dug many wells. Damo sila sa bubon. So very abundant ang water supply. Grabe ka, ka, grabe mag-flourish ang ilang mga vineyards, ang ilang mga, mga, mga olive, olive yards, ilang plantation. Grabe ang pag-flourish. Tungod niya, very abundant ang supply. Tungod niya, grabe ang ginput in na support sa sining particular king sa pag, you know, sa pag-sustain sa ilang, sa ilang na agriculture, sa ilang na economy. He was a very good economist. Very stable, very strong economy sa Judah during the time under the leadership of this king. That's economically. And, and lastly here, personally speaking, personally speaking, he was a strong king because his fame and his reputation spread throughout the known world. He was even envied, ginakahisaan siya sa neighboring ng mga, ng mga nations. And imagine, imagine for a moment, you have this particular king, a very strong king, very, very progressive sa war, grabe ka sagad sa economy, grabe ka, grabe ka, grabe ka sikat that, that other kings fear him, so wala ka mga threats. Spiritually speaking, a very good leader. Imagine having this king for 52 years. 52 years, naging lead yang Israel nga may kalinong, 
may prosperity, may victory sa war, and then this king died. This king died. This strong king died. King Uzziah reigned for 52 years and ang greater part sa iyang reign, grabe gitang pag-enjoy sa mga people sa Judah. So, what I'm trying to, to drive out here is to say nga in the year that King Uzziah died is more than just a date. It was more than just informing us that a certain king died. As far as Isaiah is concerned, it is the year that a great and a very wise king who brought successes to Judah, who brought security to the nation, is now dead. Imagine that. You have the person na ginsaligan nyo for the longest time and now he is gone and there is a threat of war nga nga possibly nga i-invade ka mo and you, ha- you, have- you no longer have that person. That's what Isaiah is feeling when he wrote verse 1 of chapter 6. He is not just here informing us na napatay niya king. He is also here telling us that this is a very good king. He was a very good king and now he is no longer here to lead the armies to victory. You know, with the impending threat of war, ang next niya successor sa throne, ang bata ni King Uzziah, ang alan si King Jotham. King Jotham during the time was very young, 25 years old. Isaiah had a good reason to be discouraged. He has a good reason to be afraid. Tungod niya ang person na ginset sa gino to lead them is now gone. He has a reason to be disillusioned. Especially that ang next niya king is too young. Tama pa ka bata, tama pa ka weak, niya maybe hindi pa gani, that's strong enough to lift the scepter. But you know what? I could imagine Isaiah siguro nag worry siya and wondering what will happen to us. Maybe at some part of his mind, he was asking, you know, are you seeing this? The king is dead. There's a threat of war. The next king is so young. Or that will happen to your people. What will happen to us? Where are you, God, in all this? Beloved in the Lord, I don't know. Maybe this is also your question sa Gino Osobong. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you lost a promotion. Or maybe you lost a business. Na bankrupt ang mga business. You know, all these years, all this time, sa sininga times ng pandemic, Dripa of all the years that you could lose your job, of all the years that you could lose that promotion, of all the years that you could lose your business, na bankrupt, subong pa na times ng pandemic, kung sa diin, kinanlan mo ginita ni. Maybe this is also your question. You know, oh, what will happen to us? Ang amon nga ginasaligan, wala na. Ang business nga, amuni, ang, ang profit nga, amuni nagapakaon sa amon is now gone. Ang job offer ko tani, ang akong tani, ang job position niya kung ma-promote ko, masugata tani, amun mga kinanlanon every day, wala na tayo sa akon. Or maybe you've been laid off from work. You can no longer provide sa iyong mga family. And you cannot help but to ask the Lord God, where are you all? Where are you in all this? What will happen to us? Are you seeing this? Maybe that's your question, beloved in the Lord. Or maybe... You are looking at our government. You are expecting that these people sitting in the government will do something, you know, to ease sa aton nga nakahimtangan subong, especially with this COVID and new Delta variant and stuff. And you think like, don't di, wala gid, wala gid ang mga tao sa gobyerno na to. Maybe amun ang imong thoughts. Poor leadership, obvious corruption, obvious injustice, and etc. Siguro you cannot help but to wonder, Lord, will you just let this pass? Will you just let this pass? Will you just let it, let us be, be governed by this kind of people? Or maybe you're asking the Lord, you know, are you saying this? Where are you in all this? Or maybe you have family problems. It is getting worse and it doesn't seem to have an end. One family problem and then may sunod naman and then may sunod naman. And you cannot help but to ask the Lord, you know, ano man? Where are you in all this? Or maybe you have health issues. Or maybe you have experienced loss in the family, death of a loved one. Subong gabi kikya costly mo hospitalize. 
kung may health issues ka, doon di ka lang mag-hospital, kikilang nantingin iswab, and nagpila ba lang isa ka swab. Ang swab test. No, it's costly to be hospitalized to bong. May mga mahal-mahal pa sa mga um, professional fee, may limited pa ang mga rooms, hindi sure kung ma-admit ka gitman. Kung ma-admit ka gitman, exposed ka naman sa, sa COVID. You know, with all these worries, I, I recall last year, sang pag-start kit, sang pandemic, when I felt like nga, nga mag-flare up sa akong lupus, I remember praying to God. Siling ko sa gino, oh Lord, I know this is a lupus flare up. Ang akong symptoms, obvious good nga nag-flare up akong lupus. But, pwede ginoo nga, pwede ginoo nga hindi anay. May, ginoo may COVID pa. Pwede nga isa-isa lang. Pwede nga COVID lang anay subong. Pwede nga i-cancel mo ni anay ang lupus. I remember praying to God like that. But then God deemed it necessary for my lupus to flare up that year, last year. And, you know, with all these deadly transmissible um, variants mutating, you worry about your health, you, wor- you worry about your family's health, especially those who are elder, those who are susceptible, tungod yung may mga comorbidities. Maybe, maybe, maybe the breadwinner in the family died. No, the only person sa inyong family nga may job, ginaga provide sa inyong kalang, na kalanon, that person died. Or maybe, ang leader sa inyong family na patay. You cannot help but to ask the Lord, Lord, what will happen to us? Lord, are you seeing this? Lord, where are you in all this? You know, you have the same thoughts and the same worry with Isaiah here. That's what his thoughts, that's what he actually felt when he wrote in the year that King Uzziah died. That's why it was more than just a date. It was more than just a king because that was a very good king who died. But thirdly here, and the last thing gusto ko ipakita sa inyo, God gave him a vision. And that vision was more than just a throne. Hambal diri sa verse, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled, filled the temple. You know, like any wise man, niya kung worry ka, ang imugid niya himuon kung wise ikaw is to bring your concern to the Lord. And that is what Isaiah did. That's why niya nagkanto sa temple. And in the temple, God gave him the answer sa iyang mga worries. God did not resurrect King Uzziah. But God allowed Uzziah to see a throne in heaven that is high and lifted up. Now, what does that mean? It means, naging pakita sang ginoo kay Isaiah who really was or who really is the true king. Isaiah saw a throne high and lifted up. So, kung namangkot ka ginoo with all these sufferings when everything seems to fall apart, where are you in all this? The answer is, God is sitting on a throne high and lifted up. In other words, God is still in control. When everything else in our life seems to fall apart, you know, hearts break, ang mga dreams na nag-crumble, healths fail, people get laid off from work, we, we experience losses in the family. Where, where is God in all this? He is still on His throne. Even when it feels like everything is out of control, even when it feels like things are going out of hand, believe in the Lord, God is still sitting on His throne. He is still in control of everything that is going on with our lives. That's the lesson here. So why is God always, you know, challenging our sense of security to remind us that He is still on the throne? So whatever it is that you are going through right now, today, what it is that you will go through today, do not forget that God is still on the throne. He is still in control. Do not believe the lie na ang, na ang evil nag-take over. Na. God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. God was showing Isaiah, you don't have to worry about it, Isaiah. You don't have to worry about it. The true king was neither the one who is lying on the grave, nor the young Jotam. I am the true king. I am the true king who still sits on my throne that is high and lifted up, and I have no plan of retiring anytime soon. 
God has no plan of giving up his authority, of surrendering his control. Siling ni Tozer, he said, while it looks like things are out of control, behind the scenes, there is a God who has not surrendered authority. Even when you feel like things are going out of hand, behind the scene, there is a God who wala pa nag-surrender sa iyang authority. Siling ni John Newton, there is one political maxim which comforts me, and that is, the Lord reigns. No matter who wins election, no matter who sits in Malacanang or in the White House, my God reigns. My God still reigns. So, like Isaiah here, oftentimes we may feel that our sense of security is threatened, especially at this time. No one can actually prepare for the emotional or for the physical trauma of pain and fear, probably of losing someone. But love the Lord, may it be that in our moments of struggle, in our moments when, when our sense of security is threatened, may it be that the theology of it will be the easiest part. You know what I mean? Okay lang yung mag-struggle kita emotionally. That's normal. That's a part of, you know, the trauma. But may it be nga hindi kita mag-struggle theologically. May we never put God's character and nature in question. God is always good. God is always on the throne. No matter what happens here on earth, God is still in control. And so, beloved in the Lord, sometimes when, when we are suffering, when we are being tested, ang duwagid ka nature, ang ginoong often gina-attack sang yawa is God's goodness and God's sovereignty. Putikan kita sang yawa kung good ang ginoo, niyaga suffer ka. Don't believe that lie. Kung sovereign ang ginoo, nga wala yung panigin kwa, ang inyong nga pagtilaw. Don't believe that lie. No matter what we experience or how we feel, we let the truth interpret our experience. And the truth is that our God is good, always good, and only good. And that our God is on the throne. He is still in control. No matter how bad it gets here or how terrible it feels, he is still in control. We need to hold on to those truths. Reverend the Lord, what are the things that causes you fear today? What are those things? What are the concerns that seem to trouble your security today? What are the things going on around you that makes you ask, where are you, God, in all this? We love it in the Lord. God would often challenge our sense of security, even to the point of removing people, taking people and positions and places and possessions in our lives to remind us that He is still on the throne. May you find the truth today to be the softest pillow na tulugan mo karon sa gabi and the solid foundation where you will stand sa mga bagay na ato bangon mo sa silingan lang. The Lord bless you. Let me pray for you. Our dear God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Indeed, Lord, you remove people. You remove us from places. You remove possessions. You remove positions. You, you threaten, you challenge our sense of security in order to remind us, like Isaiah, that you are still on the throne. That no matter how how terrible our experience here on earth may be, wala na siya naganigate sa fact, wala naganigate ang fact, niya you are still in control. And that we can always trust your sovereignty, your sovereign goodness, your love, your holiness, your justice. Because wala gin sa moment sa imo life, you know, nagin, nagin, nagin surrender mong authority mo to anyone. May your sovereignty be something as aligan ginamon sugod so kung adlaw that no matter ano man ang amon ato bangon nga pagtilaw we can still remain at peace and at rest because you are our sovereign god so thank you for this lesson thank you for this devotional this morning may you keep this truth close in our heart this is our prayer in jesus most mighty name we pray amen